Hey everybody, Mark Fox here with Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel Forever Free Ministries coming to you from Texas. It's coming October 3 and October 15. We cannot keep up with all of the daily news, but there are some current events that demand our undivided attention as students of biblical prophecy, as students of Bible prophecy. Some of the dramatic movements of the Roman papal power demand our attention as they are so important. They are impacting the world and everything is leading up to something biblical, something prophetic. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed and all the world, notice that, all the world marveled and followed the beast in some way, shape or form, all the world is going to be following after the Antichrist beast, according to Revelation 13 and verse 3. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Notice the central pivotal issue in the last days is worshiping the Creator or worshiping the beast, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, Jesus, slain from the foundation of the world. Notice the central figure in this contest over worship is the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ. And so he causes all, speaking about the United States of America, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation 13, 16 to 17. So soon, there will be an economic boycott, economic sanctions imposed on those who refuse to receive the mark of the beast. We are living in the end times and everything is connected. I've been saying that for a long time. The world is in an unprecedented crisis and most are ignorant of end time Bible prophecy. Many are blinded by truth that's mixed with error. In other words, misled by false teachings of the Roman papal power. Is the global pandemic giving the Pope, the pontiff, more global influence? The Pope wants the world to hear his vision of the future in light of COVID-19. You cannot afford to miss this important video. Stay tuned. Okay, so just before we dive into this very, very provocative subject, prophetic subject, I want to get this into your hands. This blockbuster book, this timely, relevant, powerful book called Mark of the Beast. Uh, I want to get it into your hands for free. We have an ebook. Look at the graphic here, free book. Click on link below. That's all you need to do. If you can give a donation at this time, it is greatly appreciated, but not required. What many of you have been standing with us month by month or one time donation. There are different ways that you can give. And uh, so we appreciate that. All right. You can also text the word Bible to 74121. If you're in the United States, you can text the word Bible to 74121 and you can give us your prayer request, free online Bible study course, a link to a Bible prophecy church that honors the Bible Sabbath, preaches what we are uh, near you, text alerts and more. Also, you can call and give us your prayer requests. We have a prayer team waiting to pray for you. 833 211-4878 or email us from around the world, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. I'm going to give a shout out to my good friend, Jared Bowling. I hope you go and subscribe to his channel, Bible Prophecy Made Clear. And also my good friend, Kemi Oopman, who has a new YouTube channel just debuted here recently called Unlocking Bible Prophecies. I hope you go there and subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of her future uploads. Okay, so we need to keep going. It's coming October 3 and October 15, and it's big and it's epic. Our world is changing at a pace that has never been seen in history. The coronavirus is changing everything. That is not an overstatement. 
The coronavirus is changing everything. Everything is connected. Everything is leading up to something big, something prophetic. And so I can tell you this, the Pope includes a wrong solution as a solution to climate change. The Pope speaks to UN. That is coming up just a couple of days from now, September 15. The world is listening to the Pope speaking to the United Nations. What is the Pope's message to the United Nations? Well, here's a clue. Pope Francis speaking at the United Nations in 2015 touted and promoted his encyclical on the environment called Laudato Si, on the care of our common home. And also in 2019, last year, he gave a video message to the United Nations Climate Action Summit. And also, repeatedly, the Pope is getting his messages out to the world. And so the historic massive climate change strikes were to help celebrate Laudato Si. As you can see, uh, when the Pope met with Greta Thunberg there at the Vatican, you'll see there, there in the courtyard, she held up a sign which said, join the climate strike. Notice below, celebrate Laudato Si on May 24. The climate strikes took the world by storm. No overstatement there either. Indeed, both Greta Thunberg and Pope Francis spoke about climate change to the United Nations in May of last year. Uh, the Pope spoke by video message, but Greta Thunberg spoke in person. Very passionate uh, speech. Whether you agree with everything or not, she's very dedicated and very committed to doing something about climate change. And I totally understand why some would be concerned about this. As the global pandemic continues, Pope Francis is vigorously, boldly promoting his global agenda, his global vision, with a sense of urgency because he believes that our world is experiencing an emergency. Look at what's going on. Look, everybody. Look at what's going on in California with all of the fires. Look here. I'm here to tell you something, that the fires in California are historic. They're epic. They're destructive. They're deadly. And my heart goes out to those in the West, in Washington, in Oregon, in California. And many believe that there is this trend where heat, the heat waves are increasing and intensifying. Indeed, global, global change, global uh, climate change is taking place all around us. Let's keep going. So a Pope is saying that everything is connected, but he does not understand just how everything is connected based on Bible prophecy. The Pope has personally felt the impact of COVID-19 as he is pictured here speaking to an empty St. Peter's Square in front of St. Peter's uh, Basilica there in Rome. And so due to the global pandemic, the Pope has been away from major public appearances for the past six months until just a few days ago when he made a public appearance. Our world is searching for answers and God's word alone has the answers. Look here, everybody. I'll tell you what the answer is, the word of God. If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. Let's keep going. So the Pope is offering his answers, his solutions to our current global crisis that goes beyond COVID-19. Much of his global agenda may seem to make a whole lot of sense, but I will show you that it includes something that is a counterfeit. So in case you missed it, what's there in Laudato Si? Well, breaking Pope Prophecy 2020 update, Pope's bold announcement may change everything, I am here to declare. In May of 2020, Pope Francis made a bold announcement that clearly confirms his focus during this pandemic and that is to constantly promote his encyclical, environmental encyclical, entitled Laudato Si. He declared that the Roman Church, the pontiff, 
will celebrate Laudato Si for an entire year. Look here, everybody, what does that mean? That means whenever he goes and travels somewhere, whenever people come and visit him, he is going to be repeatedly, continually, incessantly, relentlessly promoting his encyclical. Well, I believe there's most likely a lot of good things in his encyclical, but there's one major thing that is very disturbing to me, and that's what led me to do this video and other videos like this. Celebrate Laudato Si for an entire year? Are you serious? That's exactly what Roman Pope Francis has done. He's made that bold declaration, and so they're going to continue to do that. So you can expect, whether it's his speech to the UN, whether it's uh, gatherings that he has uh, at the Vatican, you can be sure he's going to continually be focusing on Laudato Si. Here he is, I repeat, Pope Francis speaking at the UN in 2015. A matter of fact, the Educational Alliance that is coming up in 2020 is going to have as its template, I do believe, Laudato Si. When he came to the United States and spoke to the U.S. Congress, he promoted Laudato Si. Paris Summit promoted Laudato Si. UN video message, already shared that. Uh, yes, promoted uh, Laudato Si. Amazon Synod, Laudato Si. And when President Trump came to visit him, what did he hand him a personal copy of? What was in his hand that he handed off to President Trump? I call it a Sunday law. Well, let's just put it this way. The encyclical includes something. The Pope includes a wrong solution for the global uh, crisis that we're facing. So Pope Francis is here promoting a false Sabbath, a counterfeit Sabbath, but God never changed his Sabbath. A matter of fact, if you look up in the sky by faith, Jesus stands at the right hand of God and Jesus stands by the most in the most holy place by the Ark of the Covenant. What's in the Ark of the Covenant? The Ten Commandments, Revelation 11, 19. So friends, don't believe it for a minute that God has changed any of his Ten Commandments or has changed the Bible Sabbath. It remains unchanged. Oh yeah, the Catholic Church claims that God gave them the authority to change it, but God never changed it. What does the Catechism say? Question, which is the Sabbath day answer? Saturday is the Sabbath day answer. Uh, question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. So there's the candid admission. Almost the whole Christian world reverences Sunday. Did God know that this attempt to change his holy Sabbath would occur from Saturday to Sunday? Yes, he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change or alter, revise times and laws. Well, what's the only commandment in the laws of God, what is the only commandment that has to do with time? The seventh day Sabbath. Only the fourth of the Ten Commandments relates to time. Remember God said he wrote it and he spoke it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And he goes on to say it's the seventh day of the week. So keeping Sunday holy versus keeping the seventh day holy is at the center of the showdown contest between the dragon and the Lamb of God, and the Lamb wins. We cannot choose any day to keep holy. God made a day holy, now he tells us to keep it holy. God's special number throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the number seven. The Vatican is constantly promoting Sunday rest. Now, I can rest on Sunday. I can go to church seven days a week. But only God can make a day holy, and he made the seventh day holy. And that should be our primary day where we go to church. Now, this might be new for some of you, and that's why I want to hear from you. You can email us, you can call us, you can text us, you can mail us. We want to know your questions, we want to know your prayer requests, and we would be glad to guide you to a church near you that uplifts the seventh day Sabbath. So, Pope John Paul II issued an encyclical in 1998 called the Lord's Day, Dies Domini. And in there, he said, ready or not, here comes Sunday laws. That's what I'm saying. And then here's a quote. In this matter, my predecessor, Pope Leo XIII, uh, the 13th, 
in his encyclical Rerum spoke of Sunday rest as a worker's right which the state must guarantee. Well, if the state is going to guarantee something, that means it's going to put it into law. Put what into law? Something that Pope John Paul II believes is a worker's right, and Pope Francis would believe this as well. All the popes believe this, that a worker's right is to have Sunday off, Sunday rest, and that the state should legalize that, should make that legal. In other words, to have a Sunday law. And that's right there in Dies Domini Encyclical by the late John Paul II. Also, the center of Catholic education is the Catechism. It's a very large uh, volume. And in there we read, quote, In respecting religious liberty and the common good of all, Christians should seek recognition of Sundays and the church's holy days as legal holidays. So that sounds very similar to the Pope's encyclical of uh, the Lord's Day. So common good, Sundays as legal holidays. Very, very clear. Sundays, legal holidays, in other words, Sunday laws. So the Catholic Catechism is very much in favor of promoting Sunday laws. But Jesus declared that the seventh day Sabbath is for all mankind, not the first day of the week, but the seventh day of the week. And he said to them, this is Jesus, the Sabbath was made for man. In other words, whether you're Jew or Gentile, it's for everybody. The Ten Commandments are for everybody. The seventh day Sabbath in the Ten Commandments is for everybody. The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Well, if Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, then who does the Sabbath belong to? The Lord. That's why the Sabbath is the Lord's Day. Let's take a closer look inside the Pope's popular encyclical, Laudato Si. Quote, The biblical tradition clearly shows that this renewal entails recovering and respecting the rhythms inscribed in nature by the hand of the Creator. We see this, for example, in the law of the Sabbath. So notice he is referring to the seventh day Sabbath. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. He commanded Israel to set aside each seventh day as a day of rest, a Sabbath. And look at the scriptures. Genesis 2, Exodus 16, Exodus 20. But watch this. Similarly, every seven years, a sabbatical year was set aside for Israel, a complete rest for the land. When sowing was forbidden and one reaped only what was necessary to live on and to feed one's household. Finally, after seven weeks of years, which is to say 49 years, the Jubilee was celebrated as a year of general forgiveness and liberty throughout the land for all its inhabitants. On Sunday, notice the switch. This is a deception, everybody. Look here. I, I, I don't want you to miss this. This is absolutely at the core of what I am exposing and what I am revealing in this video and many other videos to come about this topic. Let's go to it once again. Here it is. Pope Francis says in the Laudato Si that he handed off to President Trump that he's promoting at the United Nations on Sunday, our participation, that is speaking of Christians, in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, by the way, that term Jewish Sabbath is nowhere in the Bible because the Sabbath is for everybody, just like the Ten Commandments are for everybody. So notice what he's doing. He's saying, well, us Christians, we got Sunday and like the Jewish Sabbath is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others and with the world. In other words, he's saying that the Jews, well, they keep the Sabbath. We keep Sunday and that's a day of rest for us. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day of the new creation, whose first fruits are the Lord's risen human humanity, the pledge of the final transfiguration of all created reality. And so it also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. In this way, Christian spirituality incorporates the value of relaxation and festivity. What is he talking about? He's talking about the Sunday as a day of rest and relaxation, and festivity, 
We tend to demean contemplative rest as something unproductive and unnecessary, but this is to do away with the very thing which is most important about work, its meaning. We are called to include in our work a dimension of receptivity and gratuity, which is quite different from mere inactivity. The law of weekly rest forbade work on the seventh day so that your ox and your donkey may have rest and the son of your maidservant and the stranger may be refreshed. Exodus 23, 12. The Pope continues. Now watch this, everybody. You can't miss this. Don't be deceived. Don't be misled. This is not politically correct what I'm presenting here, but I'm here to tell you Laudato Si encompasses, includes something very misleading. Rest opens our eyes, talking about Sunday rest, opens our eyes to the larger picture and gives us renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. And so the day of rest centered on the Eucharist sheds its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor. What is he saying? Sunday rest, Sunday observance, Sunday laws will help us be motivated to take care of the environment and take care of the poor and to respect rights of others. Do you see why he's saying everything's connected? So Pope Francis is here promoting a false Sabbath, a counterfeit Sabbath. He's promoting Sunday rest instead of Sabbath rest. Associated Press, Pope, Use pandemic to give the environment a vital rest. September 1, 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown how the earth can recover if we allow it to rest and must spur people to adopt simpler lifestyles to help a planet groaning under the constant demand for economic growth, Pope Francis said Tuesday. So he's here saying, you know, we have a fragile environment we need to rediscover simpler and sustainable lifestyles. And of course, he would say that as part of the lifestyle should be Sunday rest. Already, we can see how the earth can recover if we allow it to rest. The air becomes cleaner, the water clearer, and animals have returned to many places from where they had previously disappeared. He wrote, the pandemic has brought us to a crossroads. Creation is groaning. He's making it very clear the interconnected web of life and the climate disasters are a wake up call. And so drawing attention to Earth's fragility is a hallmark of Francis's papacy. He poignantly stressed people's pressing responsibilities to heal and care for the environment in a 2015 encyclical. The pontiff issued his appeal Tuesday to mark the World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation, an annual occasion that was established for Christians in the wake of the encyclical Laudato Si. So the Pope is saying that we need to slow down from such a rapid pace in our lives. I agree with this, but the Pope desires Sunday laws, and I disagree with that. So he has a new encyclical that's coming October 3rd, 2020, The Hill. Pope plans first trip outside Rome since start of pandemic. Catholic Sentinel, Pope Francis, a new encyclical to outline his post-COVID-19 vision. All right, what is it? Pope Francis will issue a new encyclical on the human fraternity. The document will outline Pope Francis's vision for the world after the COVID-19 pandemic. Pope's agenda to how the world must respond to the pandemic's challenges, number one, New encyclical, Brothers All, to be signed on October 3rd. <laughs> Number two, Message to the United Nations, September 15. Speech, Reinventing the Global Compact for Education, October 15. We'll get into more of that in a moment. Speech, Economy of Francis. That's an event coming up November 21. We'll be on that as well. Universal basic income for the lowest wage workers excluded from globalization's benefits was something else that was touted by Pope Francis. The pandemic let us rethink the pace of our lives, which must now be turned into an ecological conversion that could let humanity finally respond to the environmental crisis. So he's basically saying, slow down, let's keep Sunday. The UN assembly will be held via video conference, but it is an important, <clears throat> it is important 
one since it marks the organization's 75th anniversary. I expect the main focus to be on how to get out of the crisis caused by the pandemic. So look here, everybody. The most influential religious spokesman on the planet, the Pope, and he wants to shape your future and my future. And he mixes truth with error. He mixes some good solutions with a wrong solution. And thus masses are an easy prey to his false teachings. And so don't believe anything I say unless you see it backed up with the word of God and with history. Let's keep going, everybody. Here we go. The global compact on education will take place October 15. Pope Francis' speech will likely focus on the recognition that everything is connected, as he stated in Laudato Si. When Pope Francis launched the Global Compact on Education, he stressed. In other words, everything's connected, and the Pope believes that Sunday rest is connected with having a better future for our world and a better environment. And so, never before, Pope Francis went on to say, has there been such need to unite our efforts in a broad educational alliance to form mature individuals capable of overcoming division and antagonism and to restore the fabric of relationships for the sake of a more fraternal humanity? Rest opens our eyes to the larger picture and gives us renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. I'm telling you, I can hear the drumbeat of Sunday laws coming soon. And so the day of rest centered on the Eucharist sheds its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor, Pope Francis. Sunday rest, what? Motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor. In other words, Sunday will help us take care of the environment. It's at the core of Laudato Si. He says, Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. And so, keeping Sunday rest heals relationship with God, ourselves, others, and the world. The Pope is saying that we need to give our common home, planet Earth, a rest, and also to give ourselves a rest on Sunday. And so, we keep going. I want to say this. Sorry about that. I want to say, give us a call. You have questions, you want to link to a church, call us or email us, 833-211-4878 or email us at amazingprophecies at gmail.com. We can help you find a church that uplifts the Bible Sabbath. We want to help you. Let's keep going. Pandemic is a wake-up call to rest. That's what it is. Pope Francis says pandemic is a wake-up call to care for creation. Today we hear the voice of creation admonishing us to return to our rightful place in the natural created order, to remember that we are part of this interconnected web of life, not its masters. In some ways, the current pandemic has led us to rediscover simpler and sustainable lifestyles. The crisis, in a sense, has given us a chance to develop new ways of living. Already we can see how the earth can recover if we allow it to rest. Today, we need to find just and sustainable ways of living that can give the earth the rest it requires. Jubilee, 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Pope Francis' message for World Day of Prayer for the Care of Creation. He says, I am very pleased that the theme chosen by the ecumenical family for the celebration of the 2020 season of creation is Jubilee for the Earth, precisely in this year that marks the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. In the Holy Scriptures, a jubilee is a sacred time to remember, return, rest. Watch that word rest. Restore and rejoice. And what he has in mind when he talks about rest, he has in mind Sunday rest. (laughs) A time to remember. We are invited to remember above all that creation's ultimate destiny is to enter into God's eternal Sabbath. This journey, however, takes place in time, spanning the seven-day rhythm of the week. The cycle of seven years and the great jubilee year that comes at the end of the seven Sabbath years. Everything is related and we human beings are united as brothers and sisters on a wonderful pilgrimage woven together by the love of God and for each of his creatures and which also unites us in fond affection with brother, sun, sister, moon, brother, river, and mother earth. We need constantly to remember that everything is interconnected and that genuine care for our own lives and our relationships with nature is inseparable from fraternity, justice, and faithfulness to others. 
We also rejoice to see how the Laudato Si special anniversary year, which he's dedicated a whole year to uplifting Laudato Si, is inspiring many initiatives at local and global levels for the care of our common home and the poor. You can expect to see many promoting Sunday rest. Conversion. Everything is connected. Vatican News. Pope Francis. Conversion of humanity necessary to heal the earth. Telling them it is only by healing the human heart that the world can be healed from its social environmental unrest. There will be, notice what's saying here, there will be no re new relationship with nature without a new human being. And it is only by healing the human heart that one can hope to heal the world from its social environmental unrest. Those were Pope Francis's prepared remarks to ecological experts gathered on Thursday who are collaborating with the bishops of France on the theme of Laudato Si. One thing about ecological conversion is that it makes us see the general harmony, the correlation of everything. Everything is connected. Everything is related. Friends, look here. Have I not, Mark Fox on my channel, Amazing Prophecies, have I not repeatedly said everything is connected? Everything is connected. Sunday rest is connected with everything in a sense, meaning that everything is is connected and everything is leading up to something big. We know the showdown is going to be about the mark of the beast. We know it's going to be over worshiping the beast, over the mark of the beast, over the image of the beast. And you need to watch my other videos where I cover the subject of the Antichrist. I hope you watch my videos on the Antichrist and many other kindred subjects. I have other videos on the subject of the Sabbath and um, we have handouts and so forth. Just reach out to us. We want to hear from you. We want to get handouts and links to you. Our staff can help you. We're here to serve in the name of Jesus. Let's just keep going, everybody. Here we go. So everything is connected, the Pope is saying. The Pope is saying taking care of our common home, care of the poor, connected to Sunday rest. And so uh, here, focusing of the theme of connectedness, Pope Francis said the same indifference, the same selfishness, the same greed, the same pride, the same claim to be the master and despot of the world that leads human beings on the one hand to destroy species and plunder natural resources on the other to exploit misery to abuse the work of women and children to overturn the laws of the family cell to no longer respect the right to human life from conception to the natural end quoting from his encyclical laudato si the pope stressed if the ecological crisis is an emergence or an external manifestation of the ethical cultural and spiritual crisis of modernity we cannot delude ourselves that we can restore our relationship with nature and the environment without restoring all fundamental human relationships. Therefore, he said, in order to heal our common home, the human heart first needs to be healed. Now, this is powerful. A couple years ago, CBS News, 60 Minutes, the Pope was on this broadcast promoting... Sunday rest, while well, in there he talked about the Sabbath. Pope Francis really likes the Jewish Shabbat. Jerusalem Post, Pope Francis really likes the Jewish custom of Shabbat. Well, wait a minute. We just keep moving here. On the seventh day, this is what it said. See, these, these uh, Jewish papers, these Jewish news outlets saw this video about the Pope promoting uh, the Sabbath. On the seventh day, he rested. What the Jews follow and still observe was to consider the Sabbath as holy. On Saturday, you rest one day of the week. That's the least. Out of gratitude to worship God, to spend time with the family, to play, to do all these things. We are not machines, he told 60 Minutes. Well, what's the Pope saying that Christians <laughs> should honor the seventh-day Sabbath? Since he said he likes how the Jewish religion honors it, the answer is no, no. What day does Pope Francis and almost all of the Christians today believe is the day of worship? Sunday. Matter of fact, look at this article. This article 
is from CBC. Pope Francis says working Sunday. Pope Francis says working Sunday negatively impacts families and relationships. A matter of fact, what does he say? Francis said the priority of the world today should be not economic but human. The focus should not be. Uh, pardon me. The focus should be on helping families and friendships, not commercial relationships. And then he goes on to say, maybe it's time to ask ourselves if working on Sundays is true freedom. In other words, what he's saying is religious freedom should be guaranteed through Sunday laws. He would believe that that's part of religious freedom is having Sunday blue laws enforced. And so, yes, he's in favor of Sunday rest being promoted. And then in the catechism, I repeat again, in respect and religious liberty and the common good of all, Christians should seek recognition of Sundays and the church's holy days as legal holidays. Religious liberty, Sundays as legal holidays. Roman Catholic catechism is clear. Sunday laws are needed. I repeat, we can help you find a church that honors the Sabbath. We're here to serve. We're here to serve. Whatever we can do to help you in your walk with the Lord, you can text the word Bible to the number 74121 and we can give you links to a church near you or Bible study course. Pope is summoning world leaders to sign a global educational pact in October. It was moved from May to October because of the COVID virus. Global educational pact in October 15. And the Pope issued a video saying, I look forward to meeting you in Rome, but that was before the COVID-19 really impacted the world. World leaders come to the Vatican to sign global pact. Well, it's probably gonna be done virtually. Uh, but I would imagine some will be able to make the trip there. We shall see, but it's on October 15. The Pope is once again calling for a unity, a solidarity among the nations like never before. And he believes that the key is an education alliance. The Pope is very clear that he wants to educate the world, especially the youth, according to his encyclical on the environment, protecting our common home, Laudato Si. So what will be the primary curriculum, the foundation of all this education? of this education alliance, you can be sure it's going to be Laudato Si. Sunday, Sunday also prevents that unfettered greed and sense of isolation which makes us seek personal gain to the detriment of all. The law of weekly rest forbade work on the seventh day and it talks about rest opens our eyes to the larger picture, gives us a renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. So the day of rest is what the Sunday rest will motivate people to take care of the environment, take care of the poor, not be so greedy. So the Roman Catholic Church admits they changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. And this is what was, what was forecast. Speaking about the Roman papal power, think to change times and laws. But what did God say? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Friends, if you love Jesus, you want to keep his commandments, including the Bible Sabbath. And so the Roman Catholic Church frankly admits changing the biblical Sabbath the seventh day of the week to Sunday, the first day of the week. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act. And the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. That's from C.F. Thomas, Chancellor of Cardinal Gibbons, 1895. <laughs> and so, Sunday rest, a worker's right. State must guarantee Sunday laws. <clears throat> Sunday rest, the worker's right. State must guarantee it. Sunday law. The catechism wants it. The popes want it. It's very clear. Religious liberty means you have to have Sundays as legal holidays. Religious liberty, Sunday laws. The pope includes a wrong solution for the climate solution, everybody. That's what's going on here now. And so 
Sunday rest to be enforced because it is good for the individual, the family, for society, the environment, and common good for all. The final test before Jesus comes is over the issue of God's true Sabbath and the man-made tradition of Sunday. That's right. Her priests have violated my law, profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy, nor have they made the diff known the difference between the unclean and the clean, and they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath so that I am profaned among them. Ezekiel 22, verse 26. God gave the seventh-day Sabbath a long time before the existence of a Jew. He gave it to Adam and Eve. In other words, the Sabbath was made for all of mankind. And I close with this. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. This is Genesis 2, verses 1 and 2. Verse 3, final verse I read. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So look here, everybody. You know what it says in the Bible? It says God is going to have a people that are preaching the truth. They are preaching the truth. God is going to have a people in the last days that are uplifting all of the commandments of God. They uplift the two C words, the cross and the commandments. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I wonder, are you willing to take a stand for Jesus? Leave a comment below. Say, Jesus, I will follow you. Amen? Jesus, I will follow you. I will follow thee, my Savior. Wherever the Lord leads, say, Mark, this is new to me. Follow Jesus. Mark, but most people don't keep this. Follow Jesus. But Mark, I'm Catholic. Follow Jesus. But Mark, I go to church on Sunday. Look, we can go to church seven days a week, but it's the seventh day that is made holy. That should be your primary day. Follow Jesus. If you want to type below, Jesus, I will follow you. I will follow Jesus. So this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. May Jesus give you strength and joy as you stand up for the Bible Sabbath.